you're going to do it is one day at a time accept a few things to change and live in consultation until you begin to change those. It's through experience and practice. And the, and the living in consultation is what's called coaching. Training doesn't work. Training works for, for some stuff, but not real behavior change. Knowledge isn't enough. You need coaching. You need daily change. You need a daily inventory of, of, of those defects of character and things that are holding you back and aspirations and joys as an individual leader that you're going to bring into your life and you need to pick a few we call them high return practices just pick pick a few like if everyone in this room just picked one thing one behavior you wanted to extricate from your life not a big one but a small one it's not about weight loss it's about not putting cream in your coffee Right? It's the tipping point behaviors where we can get success and celebrate them and then move on to the next one. It's about not eating after 9 o'clock. It's about not eating in bed. It's about, it's about exercising one day at a time. It's about whatever it is. It's, it's, it's the daily small doses. And it's the same thing with your sales guys. And every one of those small doses have to be celebrated because what we want to do is we want to live in celebration. We want to live in joy. The, the stick doesn't work for this. It's, you got to celebrate. You got to go into the spotlight and then you got to celebrate the hell out of the individual who's getting there. So if you want to change the way your sales force works, don't worry about those who aren't going there. Only focus on those who are. And I want you to not just celebrate them for their results. I want you to celebrate them for their high return practices. What is it? So this individual over there does, does, does a Google search of the person he's about to go in to talk to and he finds something in advance of going in to see him that he likes and respects and cares for. He searches for a way to care about the person. So that when he walks into the sales office, walks into the sales call, he's obviously seeing this person as somebody who cares about cancer. And, and because I saw that on, he's on a board of cancer research. And I'm, then I asked myself, who did he lose that made that something important? Or what close call did he or, or someone have? And now I begin to have this story. My fantasy in the past said I didn't deserve to be there. My fantasy now is I care for this person. And I can't wait to engage with this person as I walk in the room. And then, and then another high return practice is you've identified five packets of generosity before you go see someone. You've done as much searching as you can. And you've thought of five things that you could do to, to be of service to this person. And of the five packets of generosity, you've written them down. And you might be wrong on two or three. And by the way, only two of them are allowed to economically advantage you. Five packets of generosity does not mean five things you're going to sell them. Right? It's, boy, I read something and I see you're interested in this. I know somebody I want to introduce you to. It's called social arbitrage. Five packets of generosity means I so admire the work that you did and I have been couldn't wait to meet you. Right? That's another act of generosity, you know, clear admiration. You've got to think of your five packets of generosity. And now you're going to start walking around the world in service of others, creating an environment around yourself, inviting people in. And now you got a relationship that has given open porosity. And then the next packet of generosity, even though I wouldn't have written this down anyway, it should be a natural one for you, is to let your guard down enough and talk. Because once you've been of service to somebody, it gives you permission once you've been of service to somebody, it gives you permission to build a real relationship. But if you're up on your pedestal or you've got your walls up, you won't have that permission. It'll lock it down. Until you let your guards down and create empathy and be human and invite people in as us, in a sales call, as a leader, in a team, on an initiative for your son. Right? Our job is to create porosity and community.